Hello everyone, Mimikins here. Today I'm going to share with you some of my longsword builds featuring the Hellish Slasher. None of my builds will include tier 4 jewels except the Expert Plus 2 which is given to you as you progress through the story. There are over 300 new jewels in Iceborne making it hard for people to mimic my builds if I use specific ones. The builds can however be further enhanced by tier 4 jewels. I have marked all the slots so they are easy to see. One of my favourite longswords in the base game was the Divine Slasher. It can be upgraded to the Hellish Slasher and Iceborne. The upgrade materials can be farmed in Arena Quest. Hero King coins I have gotten from Arena Quest 6 and 7. These two quests require Master Rank 24 or higher. The other coins can be obtained from the respective monsters. Arena quests are pretty accessible as you just need Master Rank 24 and are given preset gear to fight the monster. It is a good time to try out weapons without investing resources into making them. There are many good longswords in Iceborne but today we're going to focus on the slasher. I will look to cover more specialised builds at a later date but this one is a fantastic all rounder so you can't go wrong for choosing it. The Hellish Slasher has high raw damage that can be further enhanced by an Elementalist Duel, a tier 4 slot and 40 defence which is always welcome. It comes with a large white sharpness bar. There are some longswords with purple sharpness, however these bars tend to be extremely small and high maintenance to keep up. White sharpness is good enough in master rank, but purple is a nice bonus if you can get it for your choice of weapon without giving up on too much else. It comes with 4 augment slots with the potential to upgrade to 6. I put health region and affinity. I still need to complete the extra slots level 2 and will place defense augment in here since element is useless for my raw builds. In each of my builds I've left the mantle slots empty as I use these to customise specific skills I want for the fight. Using an elemental mantle with the monster's strength and a glider mantle with those lovely tier 4 jewels allows me to have additional slots in my build for the majority of the fight. There is a 30 second downtime between the two mantles coming off cooldown. My first build is my high DPS set. It has the bonus of haste and recovery which offers a small heal every 5 hits or so, which can be useful for healing up small amounts of health to keep on top of peak performance, but it's not something I would rely on. This build has a crazy amount of DPS skills and of course you can add extra utility with 5 tier 4 slots and that's not including the mantles. My second build is more balanced with some extra quality of life adjustments. I've removed peak performance and the agitator skills which aren't active all the time and replace them with other skills like extra health, stun resistance and earplugs. I personally find earplugs to be very useful in Iceborne as I frequently have other monsters invading my hunts and it allows me to deal a lot of damage while they have their roar wars. It also takes out the frustration of being interrupted by roar in the middle of Helmbreaker or on the last hit of Spirit Blade combo. If you don't like earplugs you could swap the charm and the jewel to agitator or another skill of your choosing. If you're struggling to let go of the Behemoth set with Master's Touch, this build uses Master Rank Teostra armor with the same bonus, no sharpness loss on critical hits. It has 6 tier 4 slots allowing for many utility skills to be added with the tier 4 combo jewels. There are a lot of tier 4 attack and expert jewels that come with additional utility skills on it. I also left 2 tier 4 slots empty so you can pick your own skills depending on what you have access to. Agitator is also flexible, it's not up all the time and people may prefer to add in earplugs or extra health or whatever works for you. This build has a lot of potential to customise due to the high number of spare slots. This is my super recovery build, it uses two parts of Black Veil Valhazic's armour for super recovery which regions your health beyond the red portion of your bar. This build helps you recover from mistakes quickly, resulting in little to no downtime. Using consumables like Immunizer stack with recovery speed skill to be even more effective. It has 3 tier 4 slots, one is taken up with the Expert Plus 2 jewel. The charm slot is flexible in this build as well as the mantles. So it can be customised to your own needs or jewel options. I put Razor Sharp Charm in at the moment which half sharpness was, but if I needed something for a hunt that I don't want in a mantle like a Fluvia Resist for Valhazic, I can switch it up easily. There's also the mantle slots which can be customised to suit the situation or complete some skills like divine protection or speed eating. This build won't deal the most damage per hit but rather increases DPS indirectly by quickly recovering health passively as you fight. Obviously you will want to take a potion if your health is super low but I often find on this build even during tempered missions in multiplayer I only consume maybe one or two potions. 
Some players might be underestimating just how effective a build like this can be for increasing their quest clear speed. It's also a great build to earn new difficult monsters or for high risk investigations against tempered monsters with one faint count. The Hellish Slasher in Iceborne is an extremely versatile weapon suitable for all monsters. The weapon is easily accessible from Master Rank 24. Even if you haven't unlocked the means to make the armors, this longsword is still going to make that great Jagger set deal some good damage. Come on guys, the poor Jagger's armor gets no love. But seriously, this weapon is a great starting point to add to most builds and very competitive end game. Elemental weapons have seen a buff in Ice Barn, I will cover them at a later date and compare them to their raw counterparts. However, Rod does have the benefit of being used on any monster without penalty, making it best for overall general purpose. These are some of the builds I've been playing around with since switching up to Longsword and I like each one for different reasons. Feel free to check out some of my other Iceborne videos. Thanks for watching, please support the channel by liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.